In this video, in the last of our SALT series, we're going to go over how to do deployments with SALT. We have a good base to start with doing Postgres and Nginx. And to start out, I'm actually going to walk you through our entire server configuration to host a basic website so that you can run this and provision an entire new server based on the SALT scripts that you have. So you already know about how Postgres and Nginx work, and we've gone over Pillar fairly well. So we have a good understanding of how our SALT scripts are going to look. So I'm just going to take you through a walkthrough of all of the server configurations for all the software that we need. We're going to start with our top.sls and our SALT. And for Web01, we're going to make sure we have Postgres installed, Nginx, virtual env, supervisor, and then demo is going to be our actual deployment script. So starting with Nginx, there hasn't been anything that has changed in here. If we go ahead and look at our pillar for Nginx, you'll see that we have a demo site and then we have the Nginx configuration for running that demo site. Next we have virtual env, and this is really simple, it's just doing a package install of it. And the next thing we're going to move on to is Supervisor because we're going to use Supervisor D to actually manage our Gunicorn process so that it has a little more control over restarting processes if they die. So if we'll look at it, it's fairly basic. We, want to, we have Supervisor, we're going to make sure it's installed and running. It's going to start on startup and then for every configuration.conf file in conf.d it's going to reload the service. We have a pillar ready and it's going to loop through each of those configurations in our pillar just like in our nginx and it's going to create the config file for it with the information given. If we look at our config.genja file it's our dictionary call just like with nginx and then let's go ahead and look at our pillar for supervisor. In here we have supervisor, we have one config of demo, and then we have the data that's going to be in our config file for program Gunicorn. It's going to run Gunicorn with demo.wsgi, which is our project, and it's going to be the application. It's going to run four processes and it's going to bind it to port 8002. It's going to run this from var www demo, as the user is www data. And then the rest are specific information about starting and stopping the services. This is a fairly straightforward supervisor configuration for Gunicorn. And that's basically it for our server configuration. The Postgres SQL hasn't changed. The only thing that changed was Nginx, Virtual Env, and Supervisor. And those are all fairly basic. So the next step is to go ahead and take a look at our demo.sls file, build out our deployment. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to set web root as var www demo. Since we're going to reference this in several places, it just makes it easier to take advantage of some of our Jinja capabilities. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a managed directory at var www. We're going to make sure that it's a directory that exists. It's assigned to the user www data and the group www data. And we're going to make sure it makes the directories if it's not there. And then it's going to recursively go through all of the folders in var www data and make sure it's set to the www data user and group. Now everything will be with that user and that group, and we don't have to do something specific to do chown or whatever um, to convert it over to www data, and it runs properly with Nginx like we would expect. The next thing is to create a virtual env. In this case, we're going to have our virtual environment in var www.vmv demo. Salt's going to create it if it doesn't exist, and it's going to create it as www data. There are other options that can be done. We could actually set the requirements file to something, and it would automatically install all of those requirements, and it would check and see if anything is updated every time we ran this. However, since we want to do things in a specific order, we aren't going to have virtual if not managed salt state actually do the requirements install for us. We'll handle that here in a second. Now that we've made sure our data directories exist and our virtual environment exists, we need to actually go ahead and get our code. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we're going to have a demo state. We're going to do get.latest 
and it's going to pull the latest from our Git repository on GitHub for this episode. It's going to do it as the user www.data and it's going to put it in our web root of var www demo. So now that every time we run this state, it's going to check out the latest code into this location and just like we would do with say a fabric script or if you logged in manually to do it. We're not going to do our pip install. We're going to name it demo pip and we're going to do command.wait. Command.wait actually will only run when the watch statement that we have below gets executed. So only when we use the get.latest of dem with demo will this command actually run. If the demo never pulls the latest, then this command will never run. And it will run after the git pull is done. So the name is the actual command that we're going to execute. First thing we're sourcing uh, our demo bin activate so that we're in the proper virtual environment. And then we're doing a pip install of our requirements. And we're making sure to change our working directory to web root so it actually knows where our requirements.txt file. And then again for the user we're using www data so that we make sure everything stays right with permissions. And then again the watch watches and will only execute this entire thing if a git pull has been done with our demo above. The next thing to do is run our migrations or our stink db. This is command.wait again, and we're relying it on running the command demo underscore pip that we just did a second ago. So at this point, we're pulling our code, we're installing all of our requirements, and then we're doing a sync DB. Those are all the basic things that you need to do in order to actually run your website. So at this point, we're ready to actually restart Gunicorn. So the command that we're going to execute is supervisor control restart gunicorn. This is going to run as root since that's what salt runs at. And it's going to watch and make sure run migrations is actually run. Otherwise it's not going to restart gunicorn. So as you noticed we had all these chained together. The pip install won't happen unless git happens. Migrations won't run unless the pip happens. And the restart gunicorn won't happen unless the migrations have happened. So that way we chain them all together properly in the proper deploy order. So at this point, we have a fully functional and working deploy process in Salt. Once you understand what this is doing, it's fairly simple. The only thing we didn't do was a collect static. But based on what I've shown you here, you should be able to easily go ahead and add a collect static into yours if that's what you need to run. With that said, let's go ahead and verify a couple of things in our demo project. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look in our settings file at our database. We're going to use Postgres backend. We're going to have the database of to-dos, user Django, and password is password. Next thing we're going to look at is our template file, and which is basic HTML. We're going to loop through all of our tasks either print results or no results if there isn't anything there. Something super basic that we can do fairly easily. Finally, let's go ahead and look at our requirements file. We're going to install, we're going to install Django 1.6.2, Gunicorn, and our Postgres driver. So now that we've done our walkthrough of setting up everything on our server, doing our deploy script, and our, and our project, let's go ahead and run a high state. And voila, we actually have output this time. This is normally what you'll get back when you run your high state. In the last couple of videos, we haven't actually gotten that back. If we were to scroll through, we'd actually see everything that was executed and the output that it put out. In our case, everything executed just fine. And for the sake of time in this video, I'm not going to scroll through. So now that we have that done, let's actually curl our address. And we get back our basic HTML with no results. The mere fact that this didn't error out means that we have all of our database stuff set up. We have our virtual environment working. We have everything pip installed properly. Gunicorn and Nginx are running well. It's all fine and dandy to actually be able to run this one time and it worked just fine. So let's go ahead and edit our project a little bit and run it again, run our deploy again to verify that it works best thing to do in my opinion is to open up our requirements.txt we'll add one of my favorite date manipulation packages of arrow we'll save it add it to our project commit it and then push it to github now we're ready to jump back over to our master server and then just to save time we're gonna go ahead and do salt web01 state.sls demo and this will run just the demo salt state for us. 
And there we go. If you look at the very top of the screen, you'll see successfully installed arrow, python, date util, and six. The command for doing our syncdb ran, it didn't need to do anything. And then we also restarted Gunicorn as well. So with that, we've successfully created salt states to install all the necessary components for a website. We've done our pillar configuration to do custom configurations for multiple sites, or just to keep that secret information out of the main area, and to keep our salt states very clean. And then finally, we've gone ahead and created a deploy script that we can run. So now every time we run the high state, it'll do a code deployment for us and it makes sure to run our pip install, our migrations, and if we went to our collect static, and then restarts our Gunicorn server so that it all actually works right.